Welcome all, this is Russ. I wanted to give a little video to show you how you can use Git to sync up two copies of your files on two different machines. Uh, this is a very common thing that students will do because they're used to doing their editing on their local machine. They don't really want to learn how to use Unix. Now, I would advocate that you learn to use Unix because in the long run, you're going to be a lot faster, you're going to be a lot more effective if you can just SSH over into Lectura, do your editing there, do your changes there, do it all in one place. However, I know that historically students have very often written things locally and then they upload them to Lectura using SCP and uh, so they've always got two copies of the code. They've got their local copy and then they've got their copy on Lectura and they always, it tends to get a little confusing back and forth about which is which. Um, like I say, I would encourage you to write your code on Lectura, but if you want to do this dual maintenance thing for a while, let's see how we can use Git to make that work a little bit better. Because when Git is designed to, for professional programmers. And for professional programmers, what we often encounter is that we have dozens, if not hundreds of developers that are all working on the same repository at the same time. And so you've got a whole bunch of code and everybody's in different places making different changes. And hopefully everybody's making good changes, but we're periodically syncing things back up by sending them to the central, central repository. As such, Git is designed right from the scratch to allow dual maintenance. Uh, dual maintenance is the wrong term. To allow multiple machines to access the same repository and they work nicely together. So what I've got here is I've got the same example repository that I was using earlier. And I've got it checked out here with uh, GitHub Desktop. I've also got it checked out on Lectura. Or I should say I've got clones of it in both places. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to use Git as a way of copying files back and forth. Uh, this is not what I would say is the best way to use Git because normally you don't want to commit something until you've actually done a test build and confirmed that it runs. However, if you're going to be doing dual maintenance, this is a way you can experiment to do it. So the first thing to do is to figure out this repository that I cloned onto my local machine, where does it exist? So um, you can show in Explorer. By the way, I don't have a Mac to show this on, but I'm sure it's very similar. So this is in Documents GitHub HWC. Let's go ahead and let's open that same part.h that we've been working on. And I guess I'll just configure Notepad to be the default because I don't want to have to keep selecting it. All right, so this is the file. You've, uh, if you looked at my how to check out and modify code on the command line, you saw me making these changes just uh, shortly, just not too long ago. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make some changes of our own. Let's say, okay, we want to bring in a new include. Now that's not actually going to be something that we'll successfully build, but let's just imagine that's what we wanted to add as our code. So I've saved that file and now GitHub, GitHub Desktop recognizes that there's a change. Now you'll notice that there's actually two different marks here. Uh, the, the red section here with all the minuses is showing me lines that have been removed. The plus shows me a line that's been added. So we remove those comments we put in a new include. Oh, well, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll clean up these comments as well. And let's make this thing actually be something that can include. Uh, that's a valid file name. Now, if we go here, what it'll show is now we've removed comments in both sections. We've added a header or added an include. So now if we want, we can commit it. We can say making a change from GitHub. Uh, desktop. Really you ought to have better comments than this, but it works for now. Alright, so remember when I showed um, 
but when I showed you GitHub Desktop previously, um, that there's a difference between committing and pushing. A commit is a change to the local clone of the repository. So now we've we've got it recorded, and actually we can go on, keep making more changes, and this commit still will exist. We can go back in time and we can look at it. But the central repository has not been informed of it yet. So let's actually make a mistake here first. Let's see what happens if we just do a git pull from Lectura. Remember, git pull gets the latest changes from GitHub. It says there are no changes. Ah, that's because we never pushed. So let's push up to GitHub. And now we can do a git pull. And what do we see? We see some lines removed, some lines added in pt part.h. If we look at pt part.h, we see exactly the change that we just made. And so this is very handy. Now I know if you're familiar with using SCP, you could have done this by yourself. You could have manually copied the file over. This has a couple of virtues. Number one, this works very well with multiple files. If you make changes in a whole bunch of little files, you don't have to remember which ones changed. GitHub, or Git, I should say, is tracking which files have been changed, which files haven't. So I hope what you've seen here is that you can use Git as a way to keep our directories synchronized. Instead of copying things manually back and forth between your local machine and Lectura, you can be using Git as the repository that you're actually sending data back and forth. And the cool thing about that is that in previous classes, before I was using GitHub Classroom, students would have two copies of the code. They'd have what's on Lectura, what's on their local machine. When it came time to turn in their code, they had to upload it to D2L, and they had to remember which copy am I supposed to upload, and it was all kind of confusing. Now, if you use GitHub as your way of storing the files, then whatever is in GitHub is exactly what you've already turned in. In fact, every time you do a push off of GitHub, what you literally are doing is you're pushing not just to GitHub, but also to me. Because I'm going to be grading whatever happens to be in GitHub. This is very cool because now... I always tell my students, you should be turning in stuff early. Well, now, it, you should be turning things in continually. Every time you write some more code, push it up to GitHub. I'll be able to see it, you'll be able to see it, and you won't lose anything by making silly mistakes. I hope this was useful, I hope it was interesting, and I will see you all later.